Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to your throne of grace, O oh Lord, and we praise you, God, for your grace, for your bountiful mercy that is so abundant. And, O oh God, we also praise you for your power, for your greatness, and for the love, O oh God, that you have um, demonstrated to us in the person of your Son. O oh Lord, we thank you for the wonderful blessings that we have received from you. Thank you, God, even for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you, God, for the for this time that you have gathered us so that we will be able to pray one for another. At this moment, Lord, we bring to your presence uh, Pastor Mike Tanyala as he's dealing with cancer. We, we pray, God, for his condition as he has undergone uh, this, uh, the fourth cycle of chemotherapy, and I pray, God, that you would, um, you would uh, give wisdom to the doctors as they introduce a new treatment, uh, immunotherapy. I pray, God, that it would be effective. I pray, God, that you would also supply their finance, finances, oh God, that they will be incurring. I pray, God, that you would um, strengthen his heart and also with the whole family. I pray, God, that uh, they would sense your presence in this very in this time of trial. I pray God for the church also that they would be together as they as they go through this uh, difficult situation. Lord, we pray for those uh, people that we have in our list for prayer. I pray God that you would um, touch them, O oh God, with your healing hand. We remember, Lord, uh, our sister. Sister Rosie Dolor, and she will be undergoing. Um, she will be undergoing uh, ultrasound. I pray God that the result will be good. I pray God for Sister Linda as she will be as she is um, dealing with ascites. I pray God for her full recovery. For Sister Seni Costillo, a full recovery from her stroke. For Lucas Dumaguon, um, I pray God that you would. Uh, that he would recover from brain tumor, and oh Lord, I do not know the state of his uh, his soul. Oh, I pray, oh God, that you would uh, also save his soul, oh God. I pray, oh God, for Sister Helen's uh, final recovery from operation. Lord, thank you, God, for the for Pastor James Montenegro that he is now uh, tested COVID negative. I pray, God, that you would continually uh, strengthen him as he is undergoing this recovery. I pray, God, for the whole family as well, O Lord, that they would be able to recover fully from COVID. I also pray, Lord, for the for their provisions that they need at this time. I pray, God, that you would uh, give them, O oh God, uh, the finances that they need in this difficult situation. And thank you, God, for the churches that have signified their support, um, financial support to him. I pray, oh God, that you that it would be sufficient. I pray, oh God, that you would uh, strengthen Pastor James' spirit. Thank you, oh God, for his willingness even to continue serving you after this, even after this, this very difficult situation. I pray, oh God, that um, uh, you would just hear his healing as a testimony, oh God, of your great power. And Lord, we also pray for Pastor Boyd. We pray that you would continually touch him. And we thank you, O God, for answering our prayer that he is able to fellowship with us every Sunday. I pray, God, that you would continually strengthen him. Uh, Lord, I pray for every ministry that we have in our church. I pray, O God, that, you, that your Holy Spirit would, would have his way. I pray, O God, that you would be seen in every preaching and every ministry that we have. And I pray, God, that this coming Sunday and tonight, um, tonight, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would would work in everything that is said and done in this uh, service and services, oh God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed afternoon to everyone. Let us all stand as we give praises to our God.
Let us all stand as we sing the song Under His Wings. All together on the first verse. Under His wings I am safely abiding Though the night be pets and tempest are wild Still I can trust Him, I know He will keep me He has redeemed me and I am His child salvation is held by none other else than God alone. And that is why we find always comfort from the Word of God. We have a firm foundation. Let us sing the song, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation ye saints of the Lord is laid for your on his excellent word, what more can he say than to you he has said, to you who forever you to Jesus have led? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my right to some omnipotent hand. When true the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of salt. So shall not overflow, for I will be with thee thy troubles to bless, and sanctify thee thy deepest distress. You may be seated for our message for this evening. I would like to call Brother 
Raymond Rubinos, he is a fourth year student and one of the young men of our church. So, um, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon to everyone who's also watching online. Uh, thank you for the privilege to uh, speak again here this um, evening. So if I were to ask you, what's the most important thing in a kingdom? Of course, you'd think it's the king, right? If, um, if I would ask you, what's the most important thing in a vehicle? That would be the engine. You know, if I were to ask you, what's the most important thing in a, a human body? That would be the heart. These things that I just uh, talked about, these things are the vital part, uh, parts. Um, these are the very uh, weak points, you could say. If these things cease to function properly, then we would, uh, we would have problems. And I said uh, the human heart is the, is the most important part of the human body, but um, you can also say that our heart, uh, our truest, deepest self, is also the, a very vital and um, vulnerable uh, part of ourselves. And that is why we must guard it. So if we uh, turn to Proverbs chapter 4, um, I'll read verses 5 to 23 and just follow along. So Proverbs 4 verses 5 to 23. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the word of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, and she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in, in a way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy step shall not be uh, straight, straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the, into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil evil men. Avoid it. Pass not not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they have caused some, some to fall. For they eat bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of, ju- of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. They know the, uh, the way of the wicked is a, is a dark is as darkness. They know not what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life upon those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this um, evening. Thank you for the time you've given us to have their prayer meeting. Uh, Lord, we just pray that um, you bless the uh, preaching of your word tonight, Lord. Or use me as an instrument to uh, get your message across. Also bless the hearers uh, tonight, Lord, that uh, you open their hearts and minds to uh, the message of your word, Lord. Lord, we pray that you forgive us for any sins that uh, will hinder us from appreciating and comprehending the message, Lord, um, tonight. Uh, We love you. We uplift your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in this passage, uh, 
King Solomon talks about um, how to guard your heart. And he says it, it's, it's through wisdom. It's the wisdom that he's been taught and God has uh, given him. So I want to give you uh, simple steps on how to guard your heart through wisdom. So the first one is to get wisdom. Uh, so we always hear the saying, uh, prevention is better than cure. So instead of curing a corrupted heart, it's better to prevent a heart from being corrupted. And how do we do that? And by, it's by getting wisdom. Uh, one of the major themes of the book of Proverbs is wisdom. And of course, its author, King Solomon, uh, was the wisest man. So here in the chapter, it says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. And we see this in verse 5. Uh, Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Now, the phrase, get wisdom, is used many times uh, throughout the book of Proverbs. Uh, some examples are in chapter 16, verse 16. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than, uh, rather than, than to be chosen than silver? In verse 19, uh, chapter 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. In chapter 23, verse 23. Buy truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So get wisdom, the phrase get wisdom means to acquire wisdom. In the original text, the word, uh, the word used literally means uh, transaction, uh, commercial transaction. So we ought to buy wisdom. But it's not, as, um, it's not as simple as going to a store and purchasing wisdom. What do we mean by buy wisdom? So where can we acquire wisdom? So first of all, our wisdom should come from God. So as I was studying this, um, I saw that wisdom is described in many ways. Wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action uh, based on knowledge and understanding. Wisdom is the ability to see something from God's point of view. Wisdom is God's character in many practical affairs of life. Uh, fear of the Lord is a prerequisite of wisdom, according to Proverbs 1.7. So we, we see that we cannot have wisdom without God. Human wisdom is often described as something that brings shame, something that only the proud and arrogant have, something that is deceiving. We should not go to men or the teachings of this world uh, for our wisdom. To have uh, true godly wisdom, we have to humble ourselves before the Lord, and we should seek His wisdom and His word from the Bible. Um, second, uh, wis uh, wisdom comes from our parents. So it's commonly known that the first teachers are our parents, and the parents are responsible to teach and impart their wisdom to their child as they grow. So it's the case for almost everyone, including me. I was taught by my parents uh, from the start. They taught me how to pray, taught me how to go to church, why, why going to church is important. Uh, they, told, they told me all the Bible stories when I was young. So these are all things that a young Christian should know, but these are not things that someone can naturally learn on their own as they grow up. So it falls to the parents to be able to teach their children the same way their parents taught them. Um, this was also the case for Solomon. So in, uh, if we go back a few verses, um, specifically verses 1 to 4, Solomon is speaking as a, a father teaching his children. He says, he says here, uh, Listen, children, to my instruction and pay attention that you will gain understanding. Um, I'm giving you good teaching, so don't turn away from it. That's a little paraphrase to make it easier to understand. So we see that um, Solomon is practicing this uh, responsibility that he has to teach the younger generations. Uh, Solomon then describes how he was also a son to David. Um, Solomon was not born the wisest man, but he was first taught by his parents 
at a young age. Um, David made sure to made sure that Solomon kept uh, this command to him throughout his life that he would um, retain the wisdom David shared to him. Um, so these words that Solomon tells us to do, these were um, things that David taught him when he was younger. Um, and we can see that Solomon took it to heart. It motivated him to ask God for the wisdom. And now we know him as a wise man. Uh, so children, you must listen to the things your parents teach you. And parents, you have the responsibility to teach your children correct and sound doctrine. And it is also uh, everyone's individual responsibility to uh, acquire wisdom with everything we have. It should be uh, our passion to gain wisdom. For it is wisdom that preserves us and keeps us. And this brings me to my uh, second point, that we need to, to guard our heart, we need to keep wisdom. So it's not on, it's not uh, it's important that not only do we just get wisdom, but we have we have the responsibility to keep it. Um, God gives wisdom freely to those who ask. However, He expects us to use it responsibly and according to the way He wants. So why should we keep wisdom? Uh, first of all, it benefits us. So how is it? Um, beneficial to each of us. Uh, what are the benefits if we are responsible with the wisdom God gives us and if we use it appropriately? Um, so the first one is, wisdom will bring you honor. You can see this in verse 8 and, eight and 9. So someone once said, uh, when you lift, lift high wisdom, it pulls you up with it. Uh, when you attempt to lift yourself high, you will be brought low. However, if you concentrate not on exalting yourself, but placing uh, wisdom high to the forefront of all you do, then you shall be lifted up and honored. The word honor here uh, means to ascribe worth to someone. So embracing wisdom, so when you embrace wisdom, you have worth. Um, you are seen as someone who has worth. Um, next, wisdom will bring long life. You can see it in verse 10. So, um, this verse is not exactly a promise. It's not an exact promise, but the truth, uh, the truth of the statement, uh, it, 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 it it aligns with the rest of the the, the verses in the in the, the book. How it says that um, an example is in Proverbs three sixteen. Length of days is in her right hand, meaning wisdom, and in her left hand, riches and honor. So if we keep wisdom, we would have a longer life. Um, third, uh, wisdom will keep you on the right path. And we can see this in verse 11 and 12. So we cannot direct our, our paths by our own wisdom. We are not the ones directing our own steps. It is God who leads us on the right path. Uh, Solomon here says in verse 11 that he has taught his sons the correct way of wisdom. Uh, this is the path that, that the wisdom of God has shown him and he's doing his job of teaching his uh, teaching it to his children. So verse 12 says, When thou goest, uh, thy step shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. So straightened here. Straightened here means, it's not talking about walking straight, walking in a straight line. Here, straight here is, is a different word. It talks about a narrow path. Um... Yeah, your step shall not be straightened, meaning you won't be hindered, you won't have difficulty in walking. So wisdom prevents our steps from walking down a straight 
uh, wisdom widens the path for us to walk on. If you've seen stuntmen perform uh, uh, walking across a tightrope, of course you can, you'll see that you can't run across a tightrope or else you would fall. So wisdom makes it that we don't have to walk on a tightrope or down a tight alley or on a very, uh, very thin bridge, but instead it widens the road for us to walk, meaning our walk in life is made much easier when we walk with God and with His wisdom. So it is important to keep wisdom because it protects us. Uh, in verse 13 and 19, 2, 219, uh, Solomon warns us about the path of the wicked. He warns us not to enter the path of the wicked. Uh, note here that it does not say get off the path of the wicked. Instead, it says, do not enter, meaning from the start, do not even consider going on the path of wickedness. Uh, Solomon warns, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it. Because once you are on the path, it's very difficult to get off. If you've heard the saying, there is no rest for the wicked, uh, talks about how they are so ensnared and entangled by their sin that they cannot rest unless they do acts of wickedness. Um, verse 17 Verse 17 says, uh, For they eat the bread of wickedness and uh, drink the wine of violence. So this is a metaphor used. As humans, we seek to satisfy our hunger and thirst, right? It's a basic need that we need to, by our nature, that we need to uh, eat and drink. But because of uh, this metaphor was used because uh, by the nature of evil men, they seek to satisfy their need for wick wickedness and violence. So th that's why it is imperative that we guard our hearts because these are temptations, these are distractions that can pull us off the, wrong, the, the right path. So we need to guard our hearts with the wisdom of God, and especially today with all the different temptations uh, some, and our situation, how we're usually isolated, so we don't have, we're all mostly kept to ourselves. So our sin nature kind of uh, distracts us from these things. So we need to be able to watch our hearts carefully and watch our desires. It's very easy to fall into these temptations. Um, so again, in verse 20 to 23, Solomon reiterates what he has said earlier. He commands to listen again. To pay attention to my words, he says. So it's one thing to uh, hear the words, but to really listen and to take to heart something else, which is something a lot of us are also guilty of. Uh, he says here, let, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Uh, to retain these teachings, we need to have a, we have to keep them constantly in our view, have a constant reminder. So how do we do this? Simple, we read our Bible, we review our Bible study notes, we review our Sunday school lessons. We have to keep the source of our wisdom, which is the Bible, in sight. We should be able to write these teachings in our hearts that we may remember them uh, constantly. And to remember them better, it means that we have to apply them, we have to practice them, we have to practice wisdom and make it a habit so that we will not fall to, uh, for these temptations, for these distractions in our world. Uh, so as Christians, our hearts are very vulnerable. It, um, it's a vital part of every human. And that is why we must watch over it. We must train it to be strong. We must keep it clean. We do this through the wisdom the Lord has given us. Uh, wisdom brings prosperity to a Christian who holds it close. Uh, it will keep you on the right path and protect you from wickedness. So let's seek to gain wisdom from God and keep it that we may be able to guard our hearts from evil. Let's, let us pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the preaching of your word tonight. Thank you for the message that we heard. Lord, that we, we pray that you uh, give us the strength to uh, guard our hearts, give us the strength and wisdom to be able to resist temptations, Lord. Pray that you keep us faithful to you, Lord, as you're faithful to us. Um, we also pray that even during these times, these difficult times, um, uh, send their Holy Spirit to uh, always remind us about your word, your message, uh, and the uh, uh, refuge we can find in you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just pray for every um, listener uh, tonight, Lord. Pray for um, the strength, uh, constant strength and good health during our this pandemic, Lord. And this we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Raymond, for that uh, sharing from the Word of God. Truly, wisdom indeed comes from God. And we can always ask, we who are in need of wisdom, we can always ask from our God who never abandons us. Let us all stand as we have our closing song. Let us all stand as we sing the song, No, Never Alone. It is unwise to think that we have been abandoned by our God. So if, in, during this time wherein a lot of people doubt if God is there, we as believers have the comfort that God will never leave us. Let us sing the song, No, Never Alone. I've seen the lightning flashing and heard the thunder roll. I felt since breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. Promise never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No. Alone, no, alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Thank you everyone for attending and joining us for our prayer meeting. God bless.